All right, I wanna show you guys how I am doing alignments at home when I make modifications to my car. A little background, uh, I'm a tinkerer. Um, I do a little bit of fabrication, I build roll cages and suspensions. Uh, I've been in a rock crawling for years and I've been doing my own alignments for years. Um, but that has been on Jeeps and Toyotas and I have a 2500 Ram. Uh, all those things have something in common and that is a solid front axle. When you do an alignment on a solid front axle, you need a tape measure and a digital angle finder. Um, most of the time you don't even need the angle finder. The tape measure will do you just fine. And I can knock out an alignment at the, at the house and uh, put 30, 40,000 miles on tires. Um, without rotating them because I'm lazy, or if I rotate them every 15,000 miles or so, get 45, 60,000 miles out of tires on, on a truck. So I'm doing something right when it comes to alignments, but I've got this Porsche 944. I did a manual steering rack conversion on it, and now I want to set the toe. Um, I didn't change caster, I didn't change camber, but I put a whole new steering rack in it, new tie rod ends, everything. So what I'm gonna do is set the toe. I wanna set it with 1 16th of an inch of toe. That's what I've come up with um, for this size tire. You know, zero toe is the best for tire wear, but a lot of cars like just a tiny little bit of toe to make them not wander and just increase the, the steering feel. So I'm gonna try 1 16th of an inch. But the problem with this car is if I were to run a tape measure from here to the other side, I can't go straight from tire to tire like I can on um, something that's got 35, 37, 39 inch tires. Um, I can't just run a tape measure straight across this car. Um, I'll hit control arms, oil pan, all kind of stuff because this car sits so low. So I built a an alignment rack. Um, no, let's call it an alignment jig. So it's an alignment jig. It is specific to this car. Um, I use two pieces of one half inch square tubing that is one eighth inch wall. Um, and it's about 14 gauge, I guess. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the wall thickness, it doesn't matter. Each stick of this was six feet long and it cost $13. So this is a $27 piece of equipment. Um, I cut this four inches and four inches. So I got four, four inch legs, two uh, 11 and a half inch uprights, the bottom piece was not cut at all, and that's a two inch little dangly over there. So you're like, what the hell is this piece of junk that he's welded together, and he didn't even do a good job welding it. That's right, I spent about 15 minutes on it. Um, it's not really tack welded together, it's solid. It's, it's uh, more than tack welded, but it's definitely not a pretty job. It's not painted, not finished, I didn't grind it, none of that, because this is literally a tool that I'm gonna use to align this car and this car only. You could make one for any car that you will be working on quite often that you want to do an alignment at the house or maybe you have a track car that when you go to the track you want zero toe or maybe a little bit of toe out. Um, I don't know if you're doing drift or if you're doing autocross you might want a little bit of toe out but on the on the road you definitely don't want toe out. You want zero toe or toe in. So maybe you want to do alignments at the house um, the only thing that this rack is doing is giving us repeatable results. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, I did use a square, so it's all square. But even if it wasn't square, that wouldn't matter. What we're trying to do is get repeatable results. So let me show you how to use this piece of equipment that uh, I've made. All right, we've got the alignment jig underneath the car. When I started, before I made the jig, I measured the height of the tire with the wheel and this fits in the middle of the wheel so this is three o'clock on the wheel if this is 12 that's six that's three that's nine o'clock so now we have the alignment jig on the wheel at three o'clock this is on the passenger side so we're measuring the front so all this jig is doing is giving us a consistent baseline that we can measure against if it's not making sense it will in a moment all right, so we're on the driver's side of the car. We've got the alignment jig underneath the car. 
and I just showed you how I have the passenger side set up where the jig is touching the rim or the wheel and it is sitting underneath the car and now we have a gap that we need to measure on the driver's side of the car. So now instead of running a tape measure all the way across to the other side and guesstimating, we have repeatable results that I will show you right here. So all we have to do is measure the front of the wheel to our jig. The overall length doesn't matter. All we want to do is find the difference between the front of the wheel and the back of the wheel to measure total toe. So we are at 1 and 15 sixteenths of an inch measured at the front of both of the wheels. So 1 and 15 sixteenths inch. Now let's set the alignment jig on the back of the wheel. All right, so now I have the jig moved to the six o'clock position on the passenger wheel, measuring the back. So I've got the jig against the wheel, and we are set up to measure the other side. All right, we're back on the driver's side. Our measurement for the front was one and 15 sixteenths of an inch. And our measurement on the back is two and one eighth, or if we want to keep it in sixteenths, we could do two and two sixteenths. So the difference between the front and the back is three sixteenths of an inch. So we need to make an adjustment. All right, so I made my adjustment and I ended up exactly where I wanted to be. When I took my measurement back here, I was at two inches. When I got my measurement here, I'm at two and one sixteenth of an inch. So I'm dead on two and one sixteenth. If you could see that at the edge of the metal, two and one sixteenth. So since we're measuring the outside instead of the inside, you know, normally you run a tape measure on the inside of the wheels. I'm running a tape measure effectively on the outside of the wheels. So to get 1 16th of toe in, I want this number to be larger than that number. So the wheel that shows that the wheels are pointed the nose together a little bit. So toe in, I want both of the tires to be slightly pointed towards each other a tiny bit, the 1 16th of an inch. So I want this number to be 1 16th larger than the number back here. If I was measuring the inside of the wheel, I would want this number to be 1 16th smaller. But I'm measuring the outside because basically I want the, the wheel to be 1 16th in that way. So depending on which side you're measuring, you want it to be 1 16th inch shorter or 1 16th inch lar longer. So because this jig is made to work on the outside of the wheels, I want 1 16th here, and that's exactly what I have. So my alignment is done. All I need to do is crawl back under the car and tighten down the nut that secures the tie rod end from spinning on the inner tie rod. Um, that's typical. Anytime you adjust a tie rod, you have some kind of jam nut or adjusting collar nut. Um, that's all that has to be done, and this alignment is finished. One thing to keep in mind, I'm not sure if I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this jig is going to be specific to this vehicle. So I can't use it on all other vehicles um, unless they have similar track width and a similar wheel and tire size. So even if you have a car that sits uh, that's the same width, but it has 19 inch wheels on it, you know, some kind of modern car, um, it's not going to, it's not going to give you the perfect results. Might give you an idea, ballpark, whatever. Um, it's possible maybe to make one of these adjustable, uh, but it's the only car that I have that is, um, I'll be doing alignments on uh, when I make changes to it, um, where I won't be using a tape measure. So, um, there you go. This is an alignment jig for my car, and hopefully it will help you um, if you need to make an alignment jig for your car. This piece of metal um, is very slim, so it, might, it can hang on a wall or, you know, hang on a ladder rack out of the way until I need it. And it will give me repeatable results because it's rigid 
and it will last forever and it cost me 26 to 27 dollars as always your results may vary do not try this at home this video is not intended to show you how to do an alignment and be a professional all this is trying to do is show you what i did on my car if you need an alignment you should take your car to a professional I also want to mention that the only thing that needed to be changed on this car was the tow. The caster and camber are good. I did not mess with those at all. I just put a new steering rack in the car and I wanted to get the tow dialed in.